Hello, and welcome to For Further Review. Today I have as my guest Roseanne Barton, who is the principal at John Pittard Elementary School. It's their newest school, but we're about to build a newer school, so I thought it might be appropriate to have her today. Roseanne, would you tell us just a little bit about your career? What have you done all your life? <laughs> well, I would be happy to. Thank you for having me. Um, I started in 1985 as a first grade teacher at Reeves Rogers Elementary with Barbara Tuxon as my principal. And actually, I was hired initially as a Title I aide because there was not a teaching job. And uh, I went to see Dr. Jones, John Hodge, because at that time, everybody visited with Dr. Jones when you were hired. And I walked in and sat down, and he said, So, Roseanne, how would you like to teach? And I thought it was a hypothetical question. And so I said, Oh, well, of course, that's what I've always wanted to do. And he said, No, I mean like right now. It was two weeks after school had started, and they needed another first grade. So I literally left his office, went to Reese Rogers, met with Ms. Tuxon. That was a Thursday, and I started on a Monday. Wow. Yeah, so it was exciting. Yeah, but I taught first grade for seven years, third grade for eight years, and then I became principal at um, Reeves Rogers in 2000, and then um, moved our entire staff and population to John Pittard in 2007. Now, you have a background in education, though, from from your father, right? Father, mother, aunts, (laughs) uncles, yes. Um, My mother retired in the the county system with 30 years. My father retired in the county system after um, coaching, teaching, and administration. So, and then, like I said, I have aunts and uncles that also taught. And I have a sister that teaches, actually a principal now. And another sister that works at Central Magnet. So, so the conversations are very school related. Exactly. <laughs> that was what I was about to say. That's I'm right. sure that we great. have a lot to talk about when we get together. Right. Would you talk just a little bit about the process that you went through when you opened John Pitter? Because very soon another principal, we don't know who that will be, will be opening the new school, the Overall Creek School. So, what was that like? Well. You know, it was very unusual, and it may be the only time that ever happens, but because we were moving an entire school, um, I was named principal of the school before we ever broke ground. So I was in on literally the the ground floor of that school. I went to building meetings every month. Um, I picked out colors. I had a committee of teachers with me from Reese Rogers. We picked out colors. We visited scales because that was the school that had just been built prior to ours. And we looked at that floor plan and made some adjustments. Um, we picked out carpets, tiles, um, all of that. The thing I think that made it difficult was that I was still running Reese Rogers simultaneously. And now when a principal, and generally when a principal is named at a school, if they're already a principal, they um, are able to leave that job at least six or eight months prior to the opening and just concentrate on getting the school finished and getting a staff hired. So that was a little difficult, but um, it was really, really neat. And my kids were really excited. My kids, uh, my Reese Rogers kids, were very excited because Reese Rogers was an older school. It was a smaller school. And we had always been crowded there, always, since I've started there. So we were moving into all of this space and new equipment and pretty rooms and a beautiful gym and cafeteria. And um, I remember when we had the open house and all of our parents got to come in and see and uh, I don't know how to ex- how to describe it, but I guess it's like a family moving into a new home because they all were coming in and they were just, Miss Barton, have you seen the gym? Miss Barton, have you seen the cafeteria? And of course, I've, I've seen them many, many times by that point. But um, so it was great. It was re- it was a really exciting thing to be able to do. What advice would you have a prince to give a- to a principal who is going to open a school, who's going to start a brand new school? I think being organized is absolutely crucial. I, I had, um, I'm a notebook person, so I had three ring binders for almost everything, you know, that I was looking at. Um, I also had, you know, our school was John Pittard, which was named for John Pittard, and one of his daughters, Mary, is an interior designer. And I actually um, taught Mary at campus school back in one of my practicum classes. And so she was able to also come and help me. 
And and basically what she did, even though we picked out the colors and the tiles and the carpets, she kind of helped us pull it all together, you know, to be sure that it was going to flow throughout the school. But um, I definitely think a committee of people to help you make those kinds of decisions is, is helpful. It would have been very, I think, um, daunting for me to to decide on my own what that school was going to look like or how it was going to serve children. But I think uh, going to scales helped us a great deal, and I would expect, hopefully, that whoever is looking at this school would come to my school and let me tell them about the parts that I wish we had done differently um, or parts that well, I love the way we did that. You might want to consider that, you know. And that's what the scales people did. Katrine Stevens was the principal there when I when we went to visit, and. Um, she took me through everything and showed me the places that she wanted to change and showed me the places that she would never change. So that was extremely helpful. But I think uh, you just really have to stay so focused and organized about what the goal is I at the end. Um, and sometimes that's hard because there are so many little things that you have to do, just like building your own home. But there are so many little things, and this person's going to be hiring a staff and building, finishing building a school. So. Um, ask for help. That's another thing I would recommend. <laughs> Don't think you have to do it all by yourself. Right. You talked about Pittard, and you, you kind of talked about the culture there. What's special about Pittard? Well, you know, um, when we left Reeves Rogers, we were not all that small, really. We had grown to 770 or 780, I think, when we left. But we were in a smaller place. And so we felt like it was a family. And my staff and I met several times, obviously, but several times throughout that summer before we opened Pittard, trying to decide what was important about Reeves Rogers that we wanted to bring to Pittard. And what were the parts about our school that would be a, this might be a good time to try something different. But overwhelmingly, one of the things we wanted to do, we wanted to make Pittard feel like a small school. Because at Reeves Rogers, we knew almost all the children's names. We knew the families. Um, we knew the cars when they pulled up in the car rider line. And, and we want parents to have that sense, you know, that, that I know they did there, that we love their kids and we care about them and we know them, you know, that they're, they're really people to us and their families are important to us. So we try very hard to make people feel welcome at Pittard. From the time they walk in my front door and talk to my office staff to the cafeteria to a gymnasium. Um, we really want our parents to feel like that it's a place that they're comfortable leaving their children all day and a place that they want to get involved with to help us help them. Good. You, you've you been in education a long time, been in Murfreesboro City a long time. I have. Could you talk a little bit about the changes you've seen in the district and, and what the focuses are of the district and and uh, particularly the last five, ten years, how you've seen education change? Oh, you know, this is my 29th year. And I will tell you that within the last not even ten, probably five to seven years, there have been so many changes um, that have taken place. And, and most of those have been well-needed changes, I mean, much-needed changes. Um, I think one thing that we do very well now that I don't know that we always did is I think we work better with children at different levels. And I think that's so important. And it could be that when I first started in education, maybe there weren't as many levels. Maybe a lot of the children had experiences at home that brought them to school uh, prepared to a point that, that they all seemed pretty much at the same level. But that really doesn't happen now. We have children at all levels. And I think that as teachers and administrators, that it's a goal of ours to be sure that every child gets what they need at their level. You know, we don't teach a whole group the same thing anymore. We might introduce the concept that way, but then we're pulling out small groups and we're trying to meet our highest children. We're trying to help them progress and move forward. We're trying to help our children right in the middle stay there or grow, grow even more. And of course, we're trying to help our lower children progress and get to a point where they're closer to their grade level. So I think that's probably one of the biggest differences. Um, the curriculum, the curriculum has changed a lot. I taught first grade, I think I said when I first started, I dare say what I taught in first grade is what we're teaching in kindergarten now. 
29 years ago, mm -hmm. um, easily. Probably more in kindergarten than we were teaching in first grade at that point. Uh, we're, we have, I think our expectations of children are higher. Uh, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that sometimes we sell our children short. I think we think that they're too young or too immature to handle certain experiences when they're really not. So um, I, I'm, I'm happy about that. I see a lot of things that I think are moving in the right direction. Um, it, it's just, it's a very different time in education. Uh, and it's hard to explain that to someone that doesn't work in the field. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, a very, it's a very different time. It's a challenging time. But we still have the same children that love us and need us. And that never changes. Right. What's your vision for Murfreesboro City Schools? I think we have to continue to work with each child, meeting them where they are, and helping them to progress. I think if we are doing that for every child, and those needs may not just be academic. They may be social. They may be emotional. They may be physical. But wherever we have that, we, we receive that child in August, or now July sometimes, but August, we want to help make sure that child grows and progresses. And if they can progress or grow more than a year, that'd be great, but at least a year's time. So I, I think I, even though that sounds simplistic, there's so much involved with that that it's really not. There's a lot to that. There are a lot of people that come together in our school to be sure that children have what they need. Um, you know, a lot of our schools, most of our schools have social workers. Uh, I have a, a psychologist. I have a counselor that is fabulous. I have um, interventionists that help children that are at grade level, below grade level, above grade level. Um, I just think we've got so many special positions now, too, that have been added to support that curriculum that um, that's going to help us, I think, reach those goals. But uh, that would be another big difference because I can remember when Really, it was, it was teachers, uh, the administration, a PE teacher, a music teacher. Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of these other people floating around the school that were there for us to, to help our kids, and they are there now, and we love having them. Roseanne, if you were talking to someone who wanted to be a teacher, what would be the one thing you would want that teacher to know? You always have to remember that whatever you say or whatever you do, can make an impact on a child, good or bad. And I think that's a hard thing to, it's a hard thing to always have at the, at the front of your, your brain. But, um, you know, I've had, I, we were talking before you came about a child that I had um, in third grade. I don't know how many years ago, but she, um, I, I didn't know if she would ultimately even go to college. Um, but she's a pharmacist now. And she went to college. She, her grades were so good. She um, got a scholarship to pharmacy school. And she's kept in touch with me over the years because she remembers something that I said that encouraged her. You know, something I said about everybody that wants to go to college can go to college. And if you don't think you can, then you talk to me and we'll figure out a way. And, of course, third grade's a little early to talk about college, but it's really not because it's one of those things that we want our kids to set goals about when they're younger. You know, we don't want to wait till they're juniors and seniors in high school to talk about college. Of course, I come from a family of educators. So college was always a given at my house. I mean, that's, we would all go to college no matter what. But, um, you know, I never even dreamed that making that statement would have that kind of an impact on that child. And unfortunately, I, I've probably done or said things that may have made negative impacts on children as well. And, and that, of course, is, is devastating to me, but I think that that's the thing that you keep in mind the most, that children are so impressionable, and they, um, they adore their teachers, even though sometimes they act like they don't, they do, and they remember everything that you say and everything that happens in your class. Uh, I've had kids t tell me about the time I fell out of a chair when we were in first grade um, because I was reading a story and I got so excited, and they still remember that. You know, so um, I think that's the number one thing is that your words and your actions are always going to be so important to the children that you teach. And to always be encouraged by, for me, um, 
you know, even when it's hard, when it's challenging, when I think maybe a child is not getting what they need or not understanding something, you know, they, um, children are always so positive. You know, they don't see that. They, they are just, they're, I'm trying to think of a good way to describe it, but ultimately they are so happy to be there and to be with you at that point that if, as long as you encourage them and make them feel like it can happen, um, that, that does it for them nine times out of ten. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think those are wise words to leave with. I appreciate the fact that you're part of Murfreesboro City Schools, and I appreciate the fact that you support Murfreesboro City Schools. Thank you so much.